My name is Ray Loy, and I'm a, a deputy director of ATPESC, and I've been involved with it uh, pretty much from the beginning uh, in one form or another, and I'm also ALCF's lead for training. So the goal of this talk is a, a real quick overview of all the different systems that um, you have access to while you're here at the program, uh, as well as a little bit more detail about the Argon systems, which are, are the ones that uh, I, I hope that you might uh, focus on. Um, so Marta mentioned these systems already at, at uh, ALCF. We have uh, the KNL machine Theta. We have a Unix cluster with GPUs, Cooley. And then we also have the BlueGene Q machines. Um, and as Marta mentioned, we'll be retiring them at the end of the year. But you are, you are free to use them. Um, and we, we do have the account set up. Uh, but I won't focus on that in particular. Um, at Argon also, but not part of the leadership computing facility, we have what's called the JLSC, the Joint Lab for System Evaluation. And there are small test bed systems there um, that I believe some of the tracks, like the FPGA track, will use. So that's part of Argon, but not part of the computing facility. Uh, at Oak Ridge, OLCF, we have access to uh, Summit, right, the Cray system. And at NERSC, we have access to another KNL machine, uh, Cori. Well, it, some nodes are KNL and some are um, Haswell's. So what is leadership computing? Leadership computing is larger scale computing. Um, so uh, DOE facilities such as NERSC uh, specialize in supporting runs that are more, um, they're, they're capacity computing. So they give out allocations and you can run a, a lot of small things, but there isn't a particular emphasis on running really large and certainly not headed for exascale sizes. The two centers at ALCF and OLCF, Argonne and Oak Ridge, they were founded to provide two different um, platforms for doing large scale, in other words, leadership computing. So we typically support a small number of projects each year, relatively speaking, that get much larger allocations and that um, runs when they're in a production mode, when, they, when the project has passed, um, you know, getting things running or whatever, they're expected to run on 20% of the machine, not just 100 nodes or something like that. So just to compare the specs briefly of the current machines at the LCF, at the two LCFs, um, all right, of course, we, Argon is in transition from the BlueGene machines to Aurora, but Aurora is not here yet. So we're very busy uh, preparing and working with uh, Intel and Cray on the Aurora machine. Uh, but the current uh, machine um, beyond Mira is, uh, is called Theta, with the, which is a KNL machine. Um, and Oak Ridge, uh, of course, just recently uh, accepted Summit. So even, even though it uh, has um, about the same number of nodes, about 4,600 nodes versus 4,400 nodes for Theta, it has the GPU acceleration. Uh, so it does have a much larger uh, flop performance. Uh, but you'll see, of course, that you know, systems leapfrog each other as they come into service. Uh, another little overview of the ALCF systems. And so part of the purpose of these slides is to provide a reference for you later. They're already posted. Uh, so if you're trying to remember which machine was the BGQ machine or which machine was the KNL machine, you can look back at these. So um, primarily, um, I'll be talking to you about Theta and uh, Cooley today, and uh, my goal before we leave this room for dinner is that you can actually com log in, compile, and, and run a simple job. So uh, as I mentioned, Theta is a, is a bridge between Mira and Aurora. Um, it, um, 
um, you have the specs here, and so we already glossed over that. I'll just skip it. <clears throat> so since this is a system that you're going to be using, um, I would just want to say a few things about the key, key things that you should know. Um, when you log in, your file system will be in a GPFS, your home directory will be in a GPF, GPFS file system, but there's another file system where projects, so in other words, at PESC is a project, or if you had uh, work with uh, you know, some other um, allocation, uh, you might have a different project attached to you if you have a previous connection to ALCF. Um, and the project directories offer a lot more space that also have more bandwidth. However, the home directory is more optimized GPFS for small file uh, reads and writes. So in the big picture, it's probably better to compile um, from your home directory and do your actual runs where your large data files and so forth in a project directory. But for these little tests today, it would be fine to run them out of your home directory. There's not going to be any problem. Uh, but you know, if you're bringing over your code and working on it, doing some benchmarks and so forth, you probably want to create yourself a subdirectory in the at PESC project directory and, and run out of there. Um, <clears throat> so on Theta, uh, Theta uses a system called modules to uh, set up your user environment. And you know, when you first log in, you probably don't really care. Uh, but uh, if you need to change which compiler you're using or to add, add some tool to your path or, or so forth, you may encounter um, um, in the documentation that you need to add this module. So. Uh, um, you know, there, there, uh, if you have not used the system that uses the modules uh, software package, um, here are some basic commands. But essentially, it's a pre-set pre way to, you know, make um, Unix shell environment variable settings. And uh, if you don't know what's set, you do a module list, and uh, you you want to add something else, you do a module load, so forth. So it references on the next topic is about compilers. Um, so um, if you wanted, as I said, if you wanted to change your compiler, you would end up doing a, a module unload and a module load or maybe a module swap. So one quick thing to note when you're running on Theta is that you should use the compiler wrapper or path for just CC or big CC or FTN. Don't use MPI CC. Those are the wrong compilers. Okay. It's, those will not generate code for the compute nodes. Remember, this is a cross-compile environment like many HPC systems are now. The login nodes are, um, you know, the login nodes are Xeons. They're not KNLs, and uh, you need to invoke the correct compiler that will use the right settings for the target architecture to op optimize it for that flavor of x86. So um, by default, you'll get the Intel compile, the programming environment for Intel. If you want the Cray compilers, you'll have to swap them, and here are some notes about how to do it. OK, it's a large machine. It's a shared resource. You, there's a queuing system. We use a scheduler called Cobalt. So that, unless you've worked at Argon before, you probably are not familiar with Cobalt, but it uh, performs a similar function to, let's say, PBS. If you use the cluster, uh, the PBS uh, portable batch scheduler uh, software. So you submit a batch job, and then when the resources that you need for it, in other words, the number of nodes that you need, and whatever other criteria like the time period that it needs, you specify that and uh, when that's available, then your job will run. So you need to set up a script to do this and then you, you QSub the script. And here's an example script and then this will also be in files that you can copy later. But the critical things that it needs to know are the time, in this example it's 10 minutes, the number of nodes, which just for an example is two, and the project name, 
which for you guys will be at PESC 2019. Uh, that's uh, the bank of CPU hours, core hours, uh, to, uh, to bill against, right? There's a certain number of core hours that were allocated towards this project. And then down here we have a command called app run, which if you've used a Cray system is not uh, too surprising. App run is Cray's version of like MPI run or MPI exec. And um, has various arguments which uh, have a summary on the next slide. And then your actual parallel program that you're going to run here is in this example is just a dot out. Um, so here are the options detailed out for the number of ranks, the number of ranks per node, right? And on theta, there are 64 KNLs per node, 64 cores uh, in the node. So, um, uh, you know, you, you may or may not be doing threading, so you may not want 64 ranks on the node. Maybe you want eight ranks and you want, you know, eight-way threading or 16-way threading or whatever. So depending on your, your situation. Uh, so that's a quick reference for uh, starting your job. And in terms of affinity and things like that, that's, a, that's a, a, a longer subject and there are some links to more documentation about setting that. So when you get to doing OpenMP in a couple of days, you will want to fiddle around with some additional environment settings. And uh, there are, uh, there is an example where I'm going to point you guys to an example uh, to just run a simple program, but in that same uh, set of example files, there's a, an, an affinity example as well that has many different variations of run it this way, run it this way, run it. Okay, so um, you submit a COBOL job uh, with QSub, and uh, if you did not put the options for, let's say, the time, the project, and number of nodes in the job script, uh, I recommend putting it in the job script, but you can put it on the command line too. That's another way. And um, if you don't tell it what queue to go to, it will use the default queue, which, you know, you, it's the same thing as saying dash queue default, but the default queue is just sort of the normal um, production queue. And uh, that has various requirements, like it needs to be at least 128 nodes, it needs to be at least 30 minutes, blah, blah, blah. So. Um, for reservations, let's say tonight, we have a specific reservation. So you would specify a queue name that points to the nodes in that reservation. And that's on another slide. Um, but um, you are free to run in the production queue. You just may wait longer. So when, whenever there are some res reservations set up, you should use them unless what you want to do doesn't fit in the reservation for some reason. So the lecturer for that track will tell you what's set up for that day. We have a little summary, but I expect things, uh, I have a summary slide at the end of this talk, but I expect that the reservations may evolve as the, the two weeks go on. Um, after you submit it, you'll want to do a QSTAT to see whether your job is waiting or running or not. If you submitted it to a reservation, it should start running almost immediately. After it runs, your standard out, standard error will end up in a file, or the, some of those will start building as it's running. Um, there'll also be a file called cobalt.cobalt log that will sh show some uh, diagnostic messages from the scheduler itself. So. If you have problems, don't delete those files because we need to take a look at them to help you figure out what went wrong. And usually those um, file names are the job number dot output, the job number dot um, cobalt log and so forth. Okay, when you are developing stuff, you have the need to run something and may crash immediately and run it again. So, the best thing to do is to actually submit an interactive job, which means that you grab some nodes for a particular amount of time. So you, you submit it, you wait in the queue, then uh, when the nodes and for the time that you want are available, then you get a shell prompt and then you can do a run right there. So 
if you were working on a job script and you're trying to figure it out, you could actually just run your job script from the command line right there, or you could type the commands that are in the job script, whatever works for you. But you don't have to all of a sudden not use your job script just because you switched over to doing this interactively. But after whatever run you do exits, right, whether it succeeds or fails, right, you can just run again until you run out of time. Right? And when you've run out of time, the shell won't go away. So, but what will happen is the execution won't start. You'll get some kind of error message because the allocation of those nodes has gone away. But in order to make sure that you don't lose like an editor window or something like that, it doesn't kill the shell. But there's no message um, from the shell output that the job went away. Right? You'd have to do just do a QStat if you have any doubts about do a QStat on your own job and see, is it alive or is it gone? Um, on a large system, core files are always a problem because regular binary cores would just completely swamp the machine and tank the file system. So it doesn't generate core files like that, um, but you can get backtrace information out of a run that failed if you enable um, this um, feature called abnormal termination processing by setting a, an environment variable, and then you'll get a file that's uh, relatively speaking lightweight, and then you can load it and look at the tree of calls that your, all of your MPI ranks were at at the time that it exited. Right? It's also possible if your program is running to um, essentially interrupt it and take a snapshot of where everything is and then let it go again. Uh, and there's a, a link to more info about it here, so just let you know how that works and um, that you can do it. So um, you submit it and uh, it's not running yet. If you want, there's a graphical way to take a look at the system. This is a snapshot for Mira, uh, I, I'm sorry, for Theta. Right, so on the blue genes, because of the physical partitioning of the machines, you would end up with jobs uh, occupying um, contiguous blocks, physically contiguous blocks on the, of, on, on the machine. But on a machine like Theta, um, where there isn't this hard uh, requirement to partition uh, racks for single jobs and so forth, they can be all over the place. But if you highlight a job, um, and uh, it will, it will um, um, uh, light up that color in the display so that um, you can kind of see how spread out it is on the machine and so forth. And it also shows the queue. <clears throat> okay, switching gears here. That was the KNL, the large KNL machine Theta. All right, now we'll talk about the smaller machine that's a Unix cluster that has some GPUs, right? So if you're doing any work with GPU-based tools or so forth, this is a machine that you might want to use. Uh, it's called Cooley. Um, and um, um, Cooley does not use modules to um, manage the shell environment variables. It uses something else called softenv, and that's uh, another um, tool that is uh, somewhat unique to Argon. Um, it works in a similar way, um, but it uses, rather than using the commands like module load and so forth, it reads um, keys out of a file called .soft in your home directory. And for Cooley in particular, it's in .soft.cooley not just that soft, right? Because we had to disambiguate between the soft file for the blue jeans and the soft file for Cooley that were different architectures. So usually you would have a default um, setting in there, which is uh, this macro called default. And then you may or may not need to add, um, well, you certainly on Cooley would not need to add a, um, um, MPI wrapper XL, that example is from the blue jeans and I missed it. Um, you would need to add a key and um, when you, out, when, we, when we do the, um, the walkthrough on Cooley, I will show you what's in my default.soft at that time. 
So if you change the keys that are in there, for example, you want to change which compiler or which version of MPI or whatever that you use, after you edit this file, you need to type a command called resoft to have it reload it. Okay, the job scripts on Cooley, they also use Cobalt, but it is a little bit different than on um, Theta because it's a, um, it, 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 it some of the things take a slightly different form due to differences in the architecture of the machine. Um, so, um, and the machine itself, rather than using app run, it uses actually MPI run to launch jobs. So here's an example. You do need to reference a uh, node file. This is more like a standard cluster type uh, batch system formulation of the command. Uh, and, um, the number of ranks and so forth, and then it's Q sub, and the, the overall Q sub takes the same kind of arguments, N for nodes, T for time, the name of the Q, and the, the name of the project here, which uh, in this case would be FS 2019 instead of 2018. And um, I'll just wrap up talking about the um, ALCF machines. Uh, by saying that on all of the machines, example files with um, script, some, some hello world type programs with um, make files and example uh, job submission scripts are at this path, right? So there's a projects directory for at PESC19 instructors, and under there, there's something called ALCF getting started and examples. And then our general docs, right, in the PDF, you can just click on these, they're hyperlinks. Um, we have user guides online. Um, as I, there, there's a lot to say about running things on the blue jeans, which um, you can look at um, the slide sets here. Um, and uh, Theta and Cooley also have a separate slide set at this link if you want some additional information. And then if you're having trouble debugging, um, we'll be having some uh, talks about debugging during the performance tools track, uh, but if you need some help with something before then, here's a link to the basic methods to uh, debug. Okay, I'll just say a word about the crypto cards. You got uh, two crypto cards and one other login today, so you're probably like still trying to figure out which one is which, but at least with the Argon um, crypto card, whether you're using the um, hardware, the physical fob, or you have the one on your phone, uh, just want to mention that if you fail to log in too many times, you're going to get locked out of the system. So what I, what happens for me usually is if I don't, if I don't succeed to log in the first time, it's usually because I typed it wrong because you can't see what you're typing. So. Usually I just try the same string again without generating another string, because every time you generate a new string, you advance the window of the one-time tokens, and if you do that too many times, you get out of sync. Getting out of sync is not exactly the same thing as being locked out, but you know, if you're out of sync, it won't work either. So usually I would just type it again the second time, and if it fails, you know, something like three or four fails on one login will lock you out of that login for something like 10 minutes. So you, it's not a bad idea to just try a different host at ALCF. They all share the same login system, but the thing is if, you, if there's something wrong on that one host or it's not responsive or something, then if you log into another one, it resets your failed count. So that's uh, something to think about. But hopefully, you'll all get logged in. We won't get the site, the IP for uh, QCenter blacklisted, and we'll all be happy. So um, I mentioned the JLSC before, uh, where the testbed systems were. Here are some links to docs uh, about it. And um, when, if you have a track that is using one of those systems, they will tell you which particular system that you need to log into and what the reservation is and so forth. I think that usually the FPGA track on Monday uses uh, one of the FPGA testbed systems there, but I'm not entirely uh, sure that they are doing that, but that's what they normally do. 
Okay, um, I think I already mentioned your project name on Theta and Cooley and any Argon ALCF system will be at PESC 2019, right? The way you specify that in your job script is with dash A. And then, um, for example, tonight, like we're momentarily gonna work through some things. You don't submit to the queue called R, uh, to, to the queue default, you would submit it to the queue named r.fs2019, right? And that will vary from reservation to reservation if it, it may, may not necessarily have been set consistently, but we're, we try. And if you have any doubts about whether there is a reservation for you guys to use or exactly how the name is spelled or so forth, just type the command show res from a, log, you know, from a login prompt and it will show you all the current reservations that are set. Okay, I spent a lot of time talking about Argon. I'll spend a little time talking about OLCF and NERSC. You have access to Summit at OLCF and here are some handy links to help you get started. Um, doing that, where their user guides are and some example codes as well as their tutorials. Um, their uh, help uh, address is help at olcf.ornl.gov. And then if you get locked out or something like that, that's a 24 seven telephone support. Um, so you can get help with that quickly. But so this is primarily for reference. And the same thing for NERSC, um, if you are Logging in there, um, you would use look at the username that they gave you. It'll be train with some numbers, so like train123 at cori.nurse.gov is where you would connect. And then here are some links to their docs. And uh, um, if there is a reservation set up by any of the tracks, which I'm not aware there are currently, but that doesn't mean there won't be later, um, then you would set it with this sbatch reservation um, line in your job script. Okay, I said, was referencing before. These are the reservations that we know about right now. Um, it's subject to evolving as uh, track instructors uh, get in their last minute requests. So as I said, use show res to show you what's currently there and they will tell you uh, what they have set up. So I wouldn't worry about that. Okay, save these slides as a reference. And um, what I would like you to do now is, and I will walk you through this, is log into Theta. And we're going to uh, just compile a Hello World program and run it. Yes, Mir? Um, yes, uh, I was gonna say, I don't have access to the appx19 uh, underscore instructors directory. Uh, Oh, you can't uh, read it. Yeah, I can't, I can't okay. Um, okay, let me fix that as soon as I log in. Okay, um, Robert and is Robert in the room? Robert, is, see, Robert and uh, Adam should come just in case we have any trouble if. They're, they're in the office at the moment. Can everyone log into Theta? Well, okay, apparently I will need to just move that to the other directory because it's owned by root. That's not a big problem.
because it actually lives somewhere else. Okay, so instead of at pest 19 instructors, the link is now in at pest 2019. Is that working? <laughs> Very good. <laughs> okay, so in my home directory, I'm just going to uh, set up a uh, uh, just create this at pest test subdirectory. And then I'm going to copy um, I'm going to copy the um, getting started examples theta from the examples to my directory. Okay, so I have a copy of it in my home directory. And in there are three examples, and we're going to look at compilation. Oh, did that fall down? Yeah. Okay. The, uh, <laughs> the AV guys will, will fix that this evening. Yes? Um, I think the simplest thing is leave it and shift over for now. We'll, fi we'll fix it, but I, I think, sorry. Okay, does everybody, everybody get, grab a copy of the example? Right, the example came from projects at PESC. 2019 um, ALCF getting started examples theta right I copied I copied this path oh. I copied this path to my to my directory mm hmm Okay, but you need to resync or something like that. Where, is, is Robert here? Okay. Um, well, I, I, you'll have to. It, it, it's not synced quite right. Yeah. Um, could you just take, pop off, off to the office? Yeah. Are we supposed to leave? There's a pin. If you're using the hardware token, you need to type your pin as prefix to what to what the token says. Okay, it's not it's not synchronized, right? Yeah. Yeah. Is everyone else logged in? Okay, so the make file is very simple. Um, it just invokes CC uh, as recommended, and um, 
that's about it. Uh, so I'm just going to do a make. And now we have the executable, hello MPI, and let's take a look at the job script. It has, uh, um, the, it submits it for 10 minutes on two nodes, uh, the ADPESC 2019 project, and um, it uh, runs uh, 16 ranks, at eight per node. And what we're gonna do is uh, Q sub dash Q sub dash Q, oh, I'm sorry, show res. Right, if we do show res, you can confirm what's going on. So you'll see that it's wrapped around a lot here, but the, um, the reservation for tonight, which is called APES 2019 Sunday, the second field is the name of the queue to submit to. Right, so what we do is Q sub dash Q, the name of that queue, and then job script, so, so and so. Right, it just said it routed it to the queue. And then a queue stat. And I'll just ask for jobs on that queue. Okay, I see, happy to see a lot of you have submitted already. And I'm just queued. So um, it won't be a problem now, but keep in mind that when there is a reservation, that when you submit now, and then let's say for 30 minutes, or just an ex example, if the reservation doesn't go for at least 30 minutes more, it won't start, right? So this reservation, even though we're wrapping up in here at 5.30, I set the reservation to six o'clock just to make sure that at the end there you could submit things and then we'll just manually release it then. But you know, in general, if you have a reservation that ends at 5.30, anything you submit needs to end before 5.30, otherwise it would never start. Okay, so my job is starting. I'm not sure why the scheduler is not starting them all. So you can see in my directory that I have these, job, these files all called 35792, which is the job number, and there's the dot error, dot output, and cobalt log. Right, the cobalt log uh, shows the um, options. It shows all of the options that the QSub was done from, which is a nice record. If, you were doing it from the command line instead of in the job script itself. And um, then uh, it shows what, what some environment variables were. And the output is basically from the first eight ranks, it's hello, and it skips the rest of them until the last rank is 15, right? Okay. Can everybody run this? Yeah, what, what's up? Uh, 
Permission denied on the the files that you copied? You probably linked it because we did that first. Did you link it or copy them? The CD uh, command linked it for us. Yeah. Copy it. Copy it. Are the you don't own the files? Check the <coughs> check who owns. If you copy them, you should be the owner. If if you copy the the parent directory as an ALCF getting started, it copies the link, hmm. which means which means permission will get denied. Yeah, you can. Yeah, I think you can sort it out if you copy it a different way. Okay. So let's do the equivalent on Cooley. So I'll make a, uh, a test directory again, uh, here as well. Okay, so on Cooley, I may need to link to do the um, same thing with the uh, link. Can you do it by reservation? By Okay, so I copy the examples uh, to the um, projects at PES 2019 directory in, uh, on, on uh, Cooley to make sure that you could access them. And And then in there, there's a compilation subdirectory as well. So can you guys access those files? Yep, okay. This is uh, doing the same thing on Cooley. So, um, Oh, okay, so I was going to show you. My soft coolie. So um, the key I have 
The only two important things that you would need in your soft.cooley are a, a choice of compiler, and there probably is one there by default, but I'm not sure if it's this one. It doesn't matter if it's this one, but um, I, I chose MVA pitch to Intel, and then you need this default at the very end. So when you log into Cooley, check what's in your .soft Cooley. Um, mine has a bunch of things commented out in it, but like I said, the, uh, if there's a, you know, an MVA pitch two in there or something, you know, that, that one's probably fine too. This is a simple example, it doesn't really matter. Did it compile for you just with your default uh, environment? Then, then that's fine, don't worry about it. Uh, you only need to pay attention if it's not, you're not getting what you want. Is there a way to see, you know the Q stack command, is there a way to make that Q stack the whole reservation? So say Q stat and the name of the Q, which is r dot at PES 2019, then it will restrict the output to oh, that. Okay, there's, there's no flag or anything. There's no what? There's no flag, it's just Q stat then the. There's no flag, that's right. You don't need a flag. It'll, it'll know it's a Q name. Um, it, it'll know, it, you can specify either a job number or a Q name after, after it. Uh, okay, yeah. You could also QSTAT and grep on your username to see. Yeah, right. yeah no, right. we, we found the manual, there's a, there's yeah. a U flag you can for the user. Uh, and now that you mention it, yeah, there is. Yeah, I forgot. I forgot about it. I don't. You, in fact, I think I'm the one who asked for that feature, and then I've forgotten <laughs> about it. Which, that's kind of embarrassing. So before you were just grappling for it. Yes, then. right. It took so long for them to actually implement it that I implemented. It. Okay, so um, should be able to do just the make on Cooley. Sorry, scooch it up the screen. Uh, that's the make files prints out which compiler I'm using and then uh, the submit file um, it, it's the submit script is hard-coded to a project and a queue that is not what we're using here so when you submit you'd need to say dash q r dot at pesk 2019 and then dash a at PESC 2019, and then submit. Ah, I'm sorry. I think. I think the Q name is slightly different. So how did I figure out what the Q name is? I said show res, and on this one, it it didn't get simplified, so it's a, the name is a little longer. Um, so let me try that again. Okay. Right. So that's the submit command that I used on Cooley. Right, it's not, it's at best 2019-0728, which is the date, and then one. But you can copy paste that from the show res output. Mm -hmm. What's the like, equivalent of module available for? Uh, for soft then? Yeah, it's, um, uh, I think if you just say soft end with no arguments, it gives you the whole catalog. Um, yeah? Yes. Yeah. And I think there'll be a little character saying which ones may be loaded or it, it, it'll show which ones are default and then um, I'm not sure if it will show you which ones are actually loaded or not. So the question is, did my job run? Okay. 
Looks like I'm done already. I don't see it. This is on You're on Yep. It ran, no problem. You don't have it working yet. Four minutes, otherwise, no dinner. <laughs> Is everybody doing okay? Were you able to submit on both machines? Very good. So now on Tuesday night, when Rajiv does open, uh, uh, does MPI, right? I don't want him telling me, oh, they didn't know how to submit a job, right? You guys know how to submit the job now. Okay.